New at 9, we have some expert advice for anyone struggling to keep their cool this holiday season, specifically when it comes to your family. Maybe you have loved ones who've stuck around a little too long after Christmas. Maybe you have that one person who just knows how to get underneath your skin. Whatever it is, mental toughness expert Eric Rittmeyer has the keys to dealing with it peacefully. Eric, thanks so much for being here with us. Grace, thank you for having me. I love your dress, the red. I was going to wear red. We'd have been twinning. I, I wish I would have known. I would have wore red. We could have been twinsies. <laughs> well, Eric, you say the goal is to maintain our sanity. And step one, you say, is taking the time to respond rather than react. But, Eric, that is easier said than done. <laughs> We all have the Cousin Eddie's, Grace. They pull up in the driveway, just rub them on his belly, Clark, right? So we all have the Cousin Eddie's. We have to get much better at controlling our emotion. When we react, it's knee-jerk. It's emotion-based. We just say and do things we don't really mean sometimes. As opposed to responding, we can process information logically and then give them a response that's a little more in tune with the setting so we don't say and do things that are going to really upset people and ruin relationships. Definitely makes sense. And step two is to stay calm in volatile situations. But how? <laughs> It's difficult to do, right? I normally say vodka, but we can't do that anymore. So the, the key here is to mentally prepare. It's just like when we're on a diet. When we go to places where we know there's going to be food, we eat in advance. We plan in advance. We drink lots of water so we don't go in there and wax an 18-inch pizza. We have to do the same thing mentally. We go in prepared. So when that person says and does that thing that really upsets us, we're already there mentally. We already know how we're going to respond, so we're not going to say things that are really going to ruffle feathers. Preparation, definitely key to success. Step three, suspend your disbeliefs. What exactly do you mean by that? Yeah, believe it or not, like hundreds of thousands of years ago, Grace, when we were all like cavemen, we were able to have opposing points of view and we could still get along. We don't do that anymore, right? The minute somebody disagrees with us, we automatically hate their guts. By suspending our disbeliefs, what that means is just set aside what we feel internally, let the other person talk, hear them out, be better listeners. We listen with the intent to reply, not with the intent to understand, unfortunately, but just set aside our beliefs to let that person speak their mind. At the end of the day, we might disagree, but we don't have to dislike each other because of it. And probably a good idea to know your audience and maybe avoid certain conversations. Absolutely. We have to be aware. That's the key. Going into these situations, we can't be caught off guard. This is called systematic desensitization. Two of the biggest words in my language, I'd have no idea how to spell them. But we systematically desensitize our brain so we're prepared for it. When we get put in a situation, we've already been there so we can respond as opposed to react. And step four, obviously a very important one, know your triggers. We have got to be prepared, Grace, that the Cousin Eddies are going to come in. These people are going to come in. We have to accept some responsibility internally. We have to be ready for it. So when it happens, we've already been there in our brain. We don't need to go nuts. So we don't need to go crazy. Know the trigger's been pulled and recognize what's going to follow that is something that we're probably going to regret saying. All right. So next time a family gathering goes south, we just have to remember Eric's four tips. One, take time to respond rather than react. Two, stay calm in volatile situations. Three, suspend your disbeliefs. And four, know your triggers. Eric, thank you so much for those tips. You're the best, Grace. Thank you. Joe, Gina, you guys, love you guys. Happy New Year. Thanks for having me. Oh, happy, New happy New Year. Year. I was going to ask, what happens when your trigger sits right next to you oh, all Oh, jeez. You have to prepare, <laughs> Gina. You have to prepare. Funny that I'm her Serenity now. Serenity when she's now. like, I, I leave the studio and she's like, double espresso, please. <laughs> your trigger might not be getting you coffee you no did more. Come back I did come through with an espresso. espresso pods today. Yeah. All right, Eric. Kuna Matata, guys. Kuna Matata. <laughs> thank you so much, Eric. We appreciate it. Grace, I was going to tell you earlier, your dress reminds me of a zebra striped gum. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like perfect. Yeah. That's some good now gum. Now he commented on it, I was like, oh, that reminds me. <laughs> okay, 916 is your time right now. I always love chatting with Eric. Yeah. So